Good morning, and thank you for joining us once again this morning. We're getting closer to the peak of our study, where we celebrate the amazing victory of Christ on Easter Sunday, as we remember how he conquered the power of death and rose from the dead by the might and the power of the Father. In part one of our studies, we've looked at the picture of hope, as we looked at just a handful of the pictures and illustrations and prophecies from the Old Testament of the one who was to come, the one whom God had promised. And in part two, we considered the promise delivered, looking at those events around the birth of the Lord Jesus. Now we're in part three, looking at the perfect life of Jesus. And in this section, we've considered his baptism. We, we've considered the time when he was tempted by Satan in the wilderness. And then we've looked at the principle of team ministry that Jesus reinforces in choosing his 12 disciples. And after that, we've looked at the miracles that he did to demonstrate his glory. And then we've looked at the teaching of Jesus. All of this to point our hearts and minds to Jesus, to focus our attention on him alone, to see his glory and beauty as the one God had chosen to reveal this great salvation plan. For the next couple of days, we're going to consider some of the practical aspects of what was involved with Jesus' ministry. What he taught is, of course, of paramount importance, but we will consider the compassion and the grace seen in the perfect life of Jesus. John 11 gives us the story of the death of Lazarus. Lazarus and his sisters, Mary and Martha, lived in Bethany, just a couple of miles from Jerusalem on the southeastern slopes of the Mount of Olives. Jesus had clearly spent time with them and had grown fond of them. John records in, in verse 36 of this chapter that the Jews observed how much Jesus loved Lazarus. The beginning of the chapter tells us that Lazarus was taken sick and his sisters send a message to Jesus. They knew, they were confident that Jesus would be able to heal their brother. When Jesus received the message, he said, This illness does not lead to death. It is for the glory of God, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. It was then at least four days before Jesus arrives at Bethany. And by the time he gets there, Lazarus had already died just as Jesus had predicted to his disciples. We can see from the narrative of the passage in verses 20 to 27 that Martha fully understood who Jesus was and the power that he had. She recognized that whatever he asked of God, God would grant it to him. She recognized that had Jesus been there, Lazarus would not have died. Maybe what she hadn't yet grasped was what Jesus had told his disciples, that through this event, the true glory of the Son of God would be seen. As Martha fetches her sister, John records for us the compassion of Jesus as he interacts with this situation. He tells us that when Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in his spirit. And then when he asks where they had laid Lazarus, they bring him to the tomb. And in the shortest verse in the Bible, we are told that Jesus wept. Jesus had spent time with this family. He loved them. And as he sees and interacts with their grief, we get this insight to the compassion of Jesus. Some have suggested that he wept because he was seeing the effects of sin on the whole of creation, as Lazarus had succumbed to the curse of death. This may be so, but I'm not looking at that level and that detail of exegesis today. What we do see is his compassion as he handled real human grief and emotion, as he handled the raw everyday circumstances that we experience in our lives. What John presents for us here is not a God who is distant and remote from us, but we see God manifest in flesh, who feels compassion as he enters into our circumstances. Several times in the Gospels, it records for us that Jesus was moved with compassion by what he saw and encountered. 
And as we meditate on these verses today, let us remember that the one who was close to Mary, Martha and Lazarus and showed them deep compassion is the same one who was drawn so close to us and willingly gave up his life in order that we might know the forgiveness of our sins and that we might have peace with God. And therefore, today, as we go through difficult, heart-wrenching circumstances in our lives, we can know and experience the compassion of Jesus. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we do thank you for this account that is recorded for us by John, where we see your compassion, Lord Jesus. We see how you felt the circumstances that Mary and Martha were facing. Lord Jesus, help us to know in all the circumstances that we face, help us to know and experience your compassion, Lord Jesus. And as we do so, and as we remember this account this morning in, um, in, our, in our Bible study, would our hearts be caused to worship you, Lord Jesus? We ask this in your wonderful name. Amen. And we look forward to seeing you once again tomorrow as we continue our journey through the Gospels. God bless you all.